Well, hi everybody. Guess what? It's time to talk about fall more in depth here. Um, we're talking the first part of August here. I never really did a total garden tour this year, so I'm gonna want to, just, in this video, want to spend a little time about what's coming for the fall and where some of the garden is at right now. So hang with me, we'll be right back to give you an idea of what's coming up next. So I'm holding in here my trusty uh, shade fabric, or you call it polyester remade. It's also used to keep the uh, frost out in the fall, in the spring when it gets chilly out. But these guys here, I'm gonna be putting up somewhere because I need to find a spot to get my lettuce ready for the fall. And it's still too hot to germinate lettuce, so I haven't found a spot yet, but we'll just walk around. Maybe we'll, something will pop out of us here, an area where we can put these guys up and uh, put some uh, lettuce in eventually for the fall. Uh, but what I do want to share with you is what we've been working on lately for the fall. Uh, we've already got a few things on its way. Uh, some beans and peas planted, ready for carrots. So I'm going to kind of walk you through and show you some of those things, okay? Right behind me, we've got, doesn't look like it, there are three rows of beans planted in here. I had broccoli in here. I said, you know what? We've got a few left. I said, those are still producing some secondary heads. I left them in. The rest, I ripped them out. I want to get that space freed up. So I put three rolls of broccoli, of um, um, beans, I'm sorry, in there. There's three rolls in there. Um, they haven't started coming up. I just planted them the other day. And we do have more cabbage growing very well. Been enjoying some good coleslaw. It's been great, huh? By the way, it's a real good health benefit for cabbage. Uh, you were telling me a couple things for um, your- Good for the thyroid. Good for the thyroid, yeah, mm -hmm. cabbages, yeah. Uh, turn around behind me, Linda, right here. We did take these, this row of potatoes out the other day. Leeks are starting to take off now. They're looking much better. They're finally catching up. I had a tough time getting them started from the garden this year, so I'm probably gonna do them, see them indoors this next year, but they are starting to take off nicely. This here, I'm waiting for it to get a little bit cooler, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get some carrots going in here. And then spinach too. I usually do this about half, three cores with, with uh, carrots and some beets. And then I'll fill the rest with spinach. So spinach, I can wait a little while longer. We're in zone five, southern New Hampshire here. Our really hard frosty doesn't hit us until usually the first part of October, uh, middle of October sometimes. So light frost, end of September. So I do want to get the carrots in here pretty quickly. Uh, I'll probably do them later this week. So this here is actually our, definitely our fall cabbage. Red cabbage coming along nicely. A couple of weeks ago, I planted the broccoli in here. I had planted from actually, I held the, pl the plants in pots because I didn't have the time yet. I have interplanted some lettuce in between here. You can barely see them. They're starting, they're still doing okay. They're going to start growing now um, in the shade, which is kind of nice with the heat. It'll help them grow better. Um, so that's doing well. We've got the acorn squash, which is really filled in very nicely. Remember, I had peas here and I had on the other side beans. So we're going to your side, the beans are gone. Oh, by the way, I snuck this and I don't think you even knew this. I grew an eggplant. That's looking awesome. Mm. It, it must like it. So we're ready to harvest. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and harvest that now. Here we go. Look at that, huh? Now we like doing eggplant, like a Parmesan type of thing, I think you do. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful one, That's huh? That's beautiful. That's wonderful. So we'll, we'll enjoy that later on. Um, turn around behind you here. We got some beautiful zinnias here. What do you think, huh? I love it. Put them in a pretty vase in the kitchen. Oh, cool. And they just keep growing. They do. Very Absolutely. Good. Got a couple there, huh? Mm -hmm. They do. In fact, the more you the more you cut them, oops, here we go. Beautiful. The more they come. They come, yeah. So, so in here, I actually planted, I took the beans out. I decided to try some peas again. My challenge with peas is getting them to grow well in the fall. I mean, we got the cool weather in come, you know, October, late September, but it's the heat when they want to germinate in the cool weather, it's so blasted hot. So we'll see how that goes again. But I had some seeds left over, I figured why not try it and see what happens could you there. Do shade cloth? I did do shade cloth for it, I probably could. Puts, you know, it might help. Might be a bad idea, but I had to get my hoops out there. How about burlap? That might be a little too hot. Okay. So holding too much heat. Because but the, of I mean, they have no problem germinating. It just when they get, you know, you got 85 degree days, mm -hmm. it gets them growing too quick and they seem to get very leggy. So if anybody on there has these suggestions, yeah, the shade cloud might not be a bad idea um, for this time of year. Maybe I'll put some of that up. 
Okay, because I do have long enough burlap to go on top of that with the other wire hoops I use in the spring. Thank you, Larry. As long as you keep celery well watered, it loves the heat. So it's doing very, very well. Um, I mean, it's, these guys will just take off and do well. And they do well right through the fall. They don't mind light frost. I do eventually blanket them over when it gets in November, but the, these will last well into November. Um, these are Brussels sprouts. They're a little behind right now. Um, I hope they catch up. I think once the corn gets done here, they'll open up more for more sunlight in there. And we've got more uh, solar, more solar in here. And by the way, I did find the woodchuck hole. It is inside there. <laughs> so we had a woodchuck visit in here and I actually piled dirt all in among the celery. But um, he's gone, he's moved on. There's more beautiful celery, more corn coming here. And look at these sunflowers here. Take a look. Take a look up here. Look at that one there. And I'll tell you what, the bees, the honeybees love these guys. They are in there holding the pollen. Be honeybees need pollen uh, um, this time of year even. So they're, they're in there enjoying that pollen quite a bit. Come down along this way here. Peppers looking really good. I'm really, very happy with them this year. Um, they definitely are starting to produce. We've been picking a few here and there already. So look, look at that. Look at that one there, huh? Wonderful. Isn't that great? I think this is this is an Italian pepper for um, this is for um, sauces. Oh. Yep. Yeah. And these are just the different different right. ones coming in. Different variety. Got purple and reds and so some yellows over there. I do have a challenge with, this is damage from, not caterpillars, but um, what are those guys that hop? Grasshoppers. I mean, they are chewing. Mm -hmm. What happens when you get the drought, the grasshoppers seem to get worse. It's always with the plagues, right, huh? You get the plague. They're um, looking for moisture. More for moisture, yeah. Sweet potatoes looking really good this year. Really, really good. And our strawberries. Look over there. The corn, the corn's looking really well. This is our uh, late corn. Uh, on the other side, they're actually getting ready to pick, I would say, another week. We've already gone through one uh, harvest of corn, full bed. I'm sure that's, that's gone in a second. We'll get to that. These are strawberries for next year. They're doing okay. Um, we'll see what happens. It's, um, you know, they are shooting off runners, which is good to see. So we'll see how those do for us as, as the fall comes along here. I'm already picking more potatoes here. And ready for the next row. These two rows of potatoes are pretty well done, so we'll be harvesting those shortly. Some leftover beans in the middle here, which we'll be yanking those out. Uh, what I'm gonna do with this bed here when it's done, probably nothing, because it's kind of getting late in the season. I do have over here on this side here, I'm gonna actually go ahead and plant in here broccoli. You see the broccoli right here. Now what I did the broccoli, I started by seed indoors, actually in the shed because it was too hot. And um, I have now transplanted them into individual pots waiting for the space to open up. And now from there, we're getting ready to go ahead and plant them along here. And that's the way she goes. We're coming down to the end of the season here. Um, I will be next to working with lettuce next. I'm probably going to, I just thought of a spot where I can probably put this here. You know what? There's potatoes in here. I'm going to harvest those. And what a perfect spot. I'm just going to drop it right in here for the lettuce. Okay? See, I knew we'd find it. So that's where we'll put that. So here we go. Here's our, uh, our main season crop of, of tomatoes. Like I said, I have the earlier ones further up here, which were the 4th of July. We've been enjoying these for quite a while now, uh, for almost like three weeks now. And um, those will just keep on producing. They're prolific. They just keep on going. Uh, you got right here. Oh, we got a nice one. Yeah, look at this. Let's go and take this one. Look at that, huh? This is uh, the main season. Um, mm -hmm. They're not jet stars. They're, they're well, I think they're called prime. I'll have to check the variety. I forget what, what, what they are. These are uh, Roma tomatoes out here. And then we got a whole nother bed of Roma tomatoes straight ahead of you, with us. More celery. More celery, yep, more <laughs> celery, yep, for juicing. And then more, uh, more Roma tomatoes for tomato sauce. 
in time. So I did decide to cut this up about a, a foot off the ground, which seems to be helping more uh, with the ferriculin fer wilt, I think it's called. Basically, when your tomato le leaves start turning that yellow spotted type of situation. So by cutting it back up here higher, um, I think it should help control some of that more. So, so there we have it. Um, we're looking forward to next couple of days coming up here, getting things ready for the fall. So once again, appreciate for those who are new watching this, uh, our videos, subscribe to those who are newer and hit the bell so you get the notifications. And those that watch regularly, I really appreciate your support. Thank you for that. And uh, looking forward to getting you more uh, information of what we have coming next. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye now.